Today we're going to have a quick look at some of the new features in Rhino 7 which include quad mesh, sub D, even faster 3D graphics and in Grasshopper we've got Grasshopper Player, Clash Detection and the big one for engineers is Rhino Inside Revit. One of the big new features in Rhino 7 is Quad Mesh and Sub D. So to demonstrate these, I've got this Greek letter. It's just an extrusion as a brep in Rhino, so native to Rhino. And to show you the original normal mesh representation of that, you can see it's broken it all into triangle mesh elements or faces so each face has three sides now the new quad mesh version of this looks like this so obviously everything every element of the mesh has four sides and you can see it's treated that shape quite a bit differently it's more organic now this matters when you use the new sub D mesh because if I take this triangular mesh and then I use the sub D command it ends up looking like this <clears throat> which is not a very good representation but if I take the quad mesh version and I make a sub D representation of it it looks quite good so why would you want sub D? Well I won't go into all of it here but basically it's a geometry type allowing real-time editing of organic shapes so for example I can select this vertice and I can just manipulate it or I could select this face and I can manipulate that quite easily in real time it's a very organic tool for manipulating mesh elements even this even this section and I can if I want to use one of these new mesh commands it's quite easy to create a cone say and then I can quickly manipulate that so it's quite a cool tool Another cool feature of Rhino 7 is the new clash detection component and here I'm using it in Grasshopper and I've just got a 3D representation of some steel work and you can see I've got some service runs in here so this might be an air conditioning duct and this is a pipe of some type and that's very close to and clashing with some of the structural engineers steelwork. So how can this component help? Well if I just turn this new component on here preview by default it's showing that I've got 16 clashes clash count and it shows a point at every clash so you can see it's clashing here but not here and here and at each point in this pipe so that's a very simplistic way of doing it but it also gives you indexes of the clashes so you can use that to grab those elements and work out which ones are clashing with which so I've done that here if I unpreview that and I just highlight those so we can quickly see which elements are clashing at the moment and if for example I extend this pipe out you'll see that it's worked out I've got three more clashes now or even if I just do something crazy like do that you can see all the elements that it's clashing with now <clears throat> now good thing about Grasshopper as opposed to say Navisworks where you do this 
is that you can also run some other normal grasshopper algorithms. So for example, I've just quickly set one up here so I can tag and display by how much each is clashing. So here, for example, that height, I've extracted the height. I could do the width as well, but the height is 109 millimeters. And here I know that that penetration is 60 millimeters in that steel. So no matter what type of penetration it is, I can see the height of the penetration. So I can use that later as a structural engineer to make an assessment of this beam. I can also see the physical difference between the two if I use a union. So if I just turn off the services layer and just isolate this component here, that's literally the amount of steel that's been cut out by that service run. By far the biggest impact for engineers though of Rhino 7 is going to be Rhino inside Revit. And to show how easy this is to use, I've got it set up here in Revit. Under the Add-ins tab, you've got a Rhino 7 command now. If I click that, I get a new tab called Rhinoceros. And you've got these options available. You can load a Rhino window, but I'm just going to simply load Grasshopper. And I'm going to load something that you might be familiar with if you've seen my other videos. And it's just simply a portal frame shed that's automatically created with Grasshopper. So just like in Rhino window or the Rhino main screen, it will give you a live preview as I adjust this portal frame. And I can change the uh, bracing bay as well, for example. Now where it comes really awesome is I can turn all this line work into native Revit elements. And as a quick demo, I'm just going to use this add beam command, which is in Grasshopper. If I enable this, you can see it's turned all these lines into native Revit families in the correct locations. So obviously pretty awesome. Now even in this state, you can actually get a live preview. It's a little bit slower because it's going through Revit. But even when I've created Revit elements, I can still manipulate them and move them around with Grasshopper sliders and inputs, which is pretty cool. Now they come in as pinned. So if you just try and drag it, Revit won't let you, which is a Revit feature, nothing to do with Grasshopper. But obviously if I, I'll turn this off just to make it easier. But if I unpin that, then I can just rip it off and it's just a normal Revit element in Revit. So this link really opens the possibilities of linking Revit and Grasshopper. And the possibilities are basically endless. As a quick example, I'm going to show how you can also get information from Revit and use it in Grasshopper. So I'm going, to, I'm going to grab one of these beams and I'm using a script that you might have seen in one of my other videos again. I've got, I'm drawing a shear moment, uh, shear diagram, a moment diagram and a deflection diagram. And I can just adjust the scale. Now I can grab a couple at once if I need to. And I can get all their shear moment and deflection diagrams. So, so many things you can do. 
It also begs the question what's going to happen to Revit's native Dynamo now that we've got Grasshopper which links directly into Revit. My own thoughts are that Grasshopper is just so much easier to use, more supported by the community, has so many more components. It could, for a lot of people, it's going to overtake the use of Dynamo completely, I would suggest. However, I'm sure there's probably still some uses for Dynamo. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a Dynamo killer? It does seem to be for a lot of people to me, but let me know what you think. And finally, I'll show a quick demo of Grasshopper Player. So under Utilities, you now have these new input methods. I've got two of them here linked up to my script. One's integer and one's beamlines. <clears throat> so then I save that. I can close Grasshopper now. Okay, so to use it, you just type in Grasshopper Player here. Select your Grasshopper script. And then it's asking me the question, shear bending or deflection? I'm going to select one. And then it's asking me for a beam line. I'm going to select that one. Now to do that again, I'm going to select bending moment this time. And I'll select a different uh, beam line. And then we have, that's how Grasshopper Player works. It's pretty useful, you don't even have to launch Grasshopper, so you could set up scripts in Rhino to use very easily. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful, and we'll see you in the next one.